Okay, so in this video we're going to focus on two main objectives. We're going to be looking at quantum theory and photons, and we're also going to be looking at how the emission or absorption of these so-called photons results in changes in electron energy levels. Alright, so first up, quantum theory. So quantum theory is the idea that energy exists as discrete particles known as quanta. All right. It also focuses on the fact that electromagnetic radiation of a given frequency can only be exchanged in quanta. Um, now, I'm going to let that sink in for a sec. It's a whole new way of looking at electromagnetic radiation. I mean, before we just looked at it as wave. This adds a whole kind of new dimension to it. It actually quantifies it with a particular amount of energy. And it tells us that electromagnetic radiation, not only does it travel in waves, but in travels in, sm uh, in small bundles of energy. And we call these small bundles of energy quanta. It was really only developed um, quite recently in science terms. And it's kind of a whole new way of looking at physics. Okay. A photon is a particle that represents a quantum of light or other electromagnetic radiation. Now we can actually calculate the energy of a photon using a particular formula. Now the energy of a photon is equal to H which is a constant known as Planck's constant, multiplied by F, the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. Now we're always going to be given Planck's constant, and it's actually equal to 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule seconds. Energy, when we, when we calculate this energy, it's always going to be given in joules. So that's the unit that we use for energy. All right, so you may sometimes um, be asked to calculate the energy of a photon when given the frequency of the light. I mean, this is pretty easy. We just sub it into our formula. Now, you may also be given the wavelength, kind of alternatively. The speed, um, well, you have to be able to know how to I guess substitute the frequency for the wavelength in order to work out the energy of a photon. I mean, this is done a lot. All right. All right. So the speed of light is actually a constant value. We should know this. And it's equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So I'm putting wavelength first. So this is lambda, and lambda represents wavelength multiplied by the frequency. Now, because the speed of light is constant at a value of 3 times 10 to the power of 8 metres per second, the frequency and the wavelength are actually inversely proportional. And so we can rearrange the equation that we see here to find the energy using the wavelength. So you can actually um, establish the wavelength in terms of the frequency and the speed of light c, which we know is a constant value. So this really quantifies it for us. We can sub in this value for the frequency, you can say, into this, where we energy now equals Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light over the wavelength. So let's do a quick example to demonstrate this. Alright, so the question is, what is the energy of a photon with wavelength 200 nanometers? So we're given the wavelength in nanometers. An important thing to note is that whenever we do a question, all the units we use have to be in standard form. So for time, this is seconds. For length, this is meters. For weight, this is kilograms. And for energy, this is joules. These are probably the most important ones to note. Whenever we do any type of calculation... Um, or any type of you know, calculations question within this chemistry, um, 
set of videos, we always have to be doing them using our standard units. Alright, so we're given our wavelength in nanometers. Now, remember the length, um, the standard unit for length is meters, not nanometers. A nanometer is actually equal to 10 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. So 200 nanometers is equal to 200 times 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. So therefore, to calculate this, let's sub it into our equation. So we know that energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. Now we have the wavelength, so let's use this equation here. Energy is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. Alright, so in this case, energy will be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the power of 8 all over 200 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Now if we put these values into our calculator, we'll be able to get a value for the energy of this photon um, in joules, of course. All right. So this brings us to our next point. So how does the emission or absorption of these photons result in changes in electron energy levels? All right, so a photon is pretty much just a bundle of energy. When a photon hits an atom, it transfers its energy to the atom. Now we know the basic structure of an atom, a nucleus surrounded by electrons. These electrons actually exist in discrete energy levels around the nucleus, with the energy levels further from the nucleus being higher in energy. So if you remember the basic um, structure of an atom that you learnt, you learnt that electrons existed in orbitals around the nucleus. Now we're actually going to extend on that and say that these electrons actually exist in what we call discrete energy levels. And we're going to get a lot further into this in later videos. Alright, um, so energy levels that are further from the nucleus are higher in energy. Alright, that's an important point. When an atom absorbs a photon, um, sorry, when an atom absorbs a photon, this will result in the movement of an electron to a higher energy level. So, an energy level that is further from the nucleus. Now, the same applies for the reverse. If an electron moves to a lower energy level, it will actually emit a photon of light. Oh, and so, that all really comes down to the fact that there is, I guess, an, like a really big law of physics is that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So when an electron wants to move to a higher energy level, this energy has to come from somewhere. We can't just make it up. It has to come from something. And so this energy, the energy that the electron needs to move up, it comes from a photon. Now if it wants to move from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, it has to get rid of a portion of energy. And this energy is gotten rid of um, with the emission of a particular photon of light. All right, so that's a really important kind of um, concept. Now, quantum theory states that electrons will only exist at energy levels where the movement of electrons between these energy levels results in the release or absorption of a specific quantum of energy. This is also a very kind of important point to take into taking notice. The study of the absorption and emission of photons by atoms and the effect that this has on electrons as they change energy levels is known as spectroscopy. Right. We can actually calculate the energy levels for one electron atoms by using a particular formula. By calculating the values of specific energy levels, we can look at the differences in the energies between two levels and therefore we can calculate the amount of energy that's released or absorbed 
when electrons move between these energy levels. So we can actually then use the equation we looked at previously where energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency and we can calculate the frequency of the photon that's therefore emitted or absorbed. This is a really powerful tool and we'll get into using these equations also in a later video. So that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for listening. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.